So the first part here nearest the input connector is the input sensitivity. Generally I run that about midway, midway up. Uh, this will accommodate anything from a speaker level down to close to a mic level. I don't think it'll take as low as a mic level, but just slightly above that. So that's what the first plot is for. This one sets the, the uh, trigger level. So what you want to do initially is set that just below where the mouth triggers. And you can see the LED come on when it is triggered. There it's on. So we'll set that initially just below that point. The third pot here sets the start position of the jaw. And we can see as we move that, it makes the jaw move. So we want to adjust that so just so the jaw is closed right there. If you go too far in that direction, the jaw will actually click when it closes, it tries to force it too hard. The other adjustment you have on the board, you've got three capacitors here. There's a 10 microfarad, a 4.7, and a 2.2. And those adjust how quickly the servo will respond to sound. On the 10 microfarad, it's very slow and sluggish and very smooth action. Where on the 2.2 microfarad, it's very quick. It responds very quickly to sound. So these three jumpers here will allow you to select one of those three capacitors for your sound. And it's just something to play around with. Other connectors on the board, you've got uh, headers here for LEDs if you want to put on LED eyes. There are eyes right and left, so it gives you two outputs for the eyes. You've got a socket for a chip quarter. Up here you've got a, a header for a chip quarter trigger if you have the chip quarter in there. This will trigger the chip quarter by shorting out that socket. You've also got a driver here for higher current sources. I think Carl put that on there. In case you wanted to use a larger skull with a heavier jaw, you could actually trigger a pneumatic valve with that and, uh, and do it that way. What's the switch for? The switch is for these headers. It allows you to either power off of the input voltage or you can use a separate voltage source say you're using 24 volt, volt solenoid valves you could put in 24 volts here and take 24 volts out from this trigger to trigger it and if you're going to run it off a battery pack can you battery pack there's a header here it, it does come with a battery pack so you can use four AAA batteries and connect the battery pack there it also has an input for regulated 5 volt input so uh, if you had a 5 volt source, you, you could connect directly here. In our case, we're using a 9 volt power supply, so we're connected up here to the 9 to 24 volt input. And what's the other connector for? The other RCA? Oh, that's never mind. Yeah, we saw yeah. that's that's your. These two connectors are looped together, so you could put sound in either one uh -huh. and get sound out the other. I find it easiest to use the RCA plug or RCA jack as the input and to plug your computer speakers into the uh, 3.5 millimeter. And then the two LED lights? This is just a power light, and this indicates when the servo is actually being driven. Okay. Cool. That's pretty complete. Hey, thanks so much.